right, in this video, this is going to be, I guess, part one that you could say to making these weather graphs. Uh, we're going to focus in this next series of videos on creating the line graph, the bar graph that you see here, and then we can actually combine both of those together. Uh, ultimately, when it's all said and done, we'll have a three-day forecast with maxes and mins, and you'll have these lines and bar graphs to display this information. This first part is very important in regards to understanding a lot of the text globals that I'll be using. The reason why I use a lot of text globals here is because, as you can see, these are fairly long and they get used quite often in our codes. So instead of me having to type this stuff in over and over and over, all these pieces that you see here, if we set them as a text global, we can just use our text global variable, which is a lot shorter to type in and easier to manage and edit in the event that we need to edit. But pretty much these are set in stone with the exception of these two right here. Uh, we can adjust this number here. I want to explain all that to you in this video. And if you haven't watched the first part to this, this is the first part, but if you haven't watched the weather graphs introduction, that kind of goes into a little bit more detail of what we will be doing as well. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So here we are inside of KOWP and I already have the component. Uh, I've added a component, a blank component. I went ahead and exported it and I've already had these globals made inside of this thing. However, I don't have actually any items inside of this component yet, as you can see here. That's what we're going to be doing over the course of these next few videos. So the globals is what I want you to understand. And these first two that we're gonna see here, this is going to allow us to find the maximum. This first global you see here, the three day max, and that's the one that you see up here. What this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to find the maximum of the max temperatures over the next three days. And this is gonna be helpful for those of you who are not maybe used to some of the functions or formulas in KOWP. So notice I got a 73 up here right now. I'm just gonna uh, show you some more things that we can do with math utilities and finding the max. So I'm gonna do MU for math utilities, max, and I'm gonna type in a list of numbers. So if you look at these list of numbers here, we have a one, a three, a five, a 45, and a six. This max is going to find the maximum of the list of numbers that you see here. So notice we do have a 45. If I come in here and delete the 45, notice that changed to a six. Now this 73 is using the same type of information, but what we're doing there is we want to find the maximum of the maxes over the next three days. So let me show you that with the weather forecast function. So weather forecast, I wanna find the maximum for tomorrow. That's the function to find the maximum temperature for one day away, tomorrow. So the max tomorrow is 71 where I am. If I do max for two days away, that's gonna be a 73. And if I do a max for three days away, that's gonna be a 64. Out of those three numbers that you just saw, 73 was the highest one. That's what this function that you see here originally is actually returning. It's going to look at the maximum temperatures for the next three days, the way I have it set up here, and it's going to return the highest of those three. Now, I also have a MU round. If I take away this MU round, what it's going to return there is a 73.0, which there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to come over here and delete a parentheses. There's nothing wrong with that, but when I display this number, I don't necessarily want to see the dot zero. So if we just do a MU round out front, math utilities, round with a comma, and throw an extra parentheses here, it's going to take away that dot zero. Now, very similar to this is going to be the three day min. So the function is over here, the formula that we're going to be using, but instead of us finding the maximum over the next three days, I want the lowest of my three minimums over the course of the next three days. It's the same formula pretty much, except we're using mins instead. All right, so that's gonna return the lowest of the minimums over the next three days for our three day forecast. So very similar to the max, except we're doing the mins. The mid temp, so now that we've formed these two pieces, uh, the mid temp, what I wanna do here is I wanna add those two things together. These two text globals that are returning numbers, I wanna add those two things together and divide by two. Um, this is going to find the middle of the maximum over the next three days and the minimum over the next three days. So we add those two numbers together and we divide by two. Make sure you pay attention to the parentheses because of order of operations. So that's the mid temp. 
Something else that we also need is the max min DF. That just stands for max min difference. And basically what we want to do here is we want to take those two global variables up here that we've created and we want to find the difference between them. So if I go back real quick and I look at my three day max, which is 73, and I look at my three day min, which is 37. If we add those two together, 37 and 73 is 110. So notice if we take 110 and divide by two, we're getting that mid temp that I was talking about a moment ago. But now if we think about that 37 and that 73, the difference between those 73 minus 37, we get a 36. So that's what this max min DF, that stands for max min difference, that's the difference between our maximum and our minimum temperatures based on these two globals that we've created already. Now, the next two that we see are one, two min difference and two, three min difference. Now we have to use an absolute value here. Let's talk about absolute value if you're not familiar with the math utilities. Absolute value will always return a positive number. For example, let's do, so we have a 16 up here, but let's just kind of look at what we got going on. Uh, if I do math utilities, abs with a comma, if I do 12 minus four, well, 12 minus four is eight, right? So it's the absolute value of eight is gonna be eight. However, if I switch this around and say four minus 12, four minus 12 is actually a negative eight, but notice it's still returning a positive eight. That's because of this absolute value. The reason why we need to use that here is because the minimum from one day away and two days away, this minimum here may be higher or lower than what the minimum two days away may be, but all I wanna know is the difference between them. I don't care about if one's higher or lower in this particular part, I just want to know the difference between them and I wanna get a positive number, hence the absolute value. And notice how I got the parentheses set up, so make sure you had that set up correctly. So that was one, two minimum difference, the minimum difference between uh, day one day away and two days away. Same thing for the two, three, minimum difference, except I'm using a two and a three because I want the minimum two days away and the minimum three days away. I want the difference between them and I want a positive number, hence the absolute value. Let's repeat that process for the differences between our maximums for one and two days away, as well as two and three days away. As you can see, all four of these functions, all four of these formulas here are very similar and you can see those right over here as well those four right there, except I'm finding the differences sometimes between the minimums or sometimes the maximums. And again, all I want is the positive number, just the difference between them, so we're using absolute value. Now, some of these text globals will not be used on the bar graph, but since we're gonna be putting the bar graph and the line graph all, of, all inside of one component, these here, uh, I think everything so far is gonna get used, if I'm not mistaken, on the bar graph. These next four are only going to be used on the line graph. The line graph requires a lot more math to actually get it to work correctly, um, as I mentioned back over here in this video uh, yesterday that I posted yesterday. So these here, what we wanna do is the one, two, you can't quite see the whole name here, but it's the same formula. Um, the one, two, max, mid. What we wanna do is we wanna take the maximum for one day away, we wanna add the minimum from one day or two days away. We wanna add those two together and we want to divide it by two. Basically what we're doing is we're finding the halfway point between the max for tomorrow and the max for two days away. That's gonna be very helpful when we create our line graph. So maybe these names here are starting to make a little bit more sense. The two, three max mid, I'm adding the maximum temperature for two days away and three days away. And then I'm dividing it by two to find the middle of those two. Same thing for one, two minimum. That's one day away and two days away adding the minimums together, dividing it by two, and then the two, three, min, middle, same thing for that, except I'm using two days away and three days away, adding those two minimums and dividing by two. So we're using a lot of math already, and basically what this is doing, make sure you do all the parentheses correctly, this is going to prevent us from having to type this stuff in or go in and edit these numbers over and over and over. It's gonna be a lot easier for us to use a text global that we've created here when we go to do our math formulas because some of our math formulas are still going to be a little bit long but nowhere near as long since we are incorporating these text global variables. Now something I failed to mention back here at the beginning uh, you may notice 
that in this formula here, the three day max, I don't have the plus one and the minus one in here. I'm gonna come back and address that when we actually start creating the bar graph. When we create the bar graphs, you're gonna notice that this plus one and minus one, I did mention it in this video, but we can actually put whatever numbers we want here to make the graph look a little bit better or a little bit easier to read. Um, but you don't have to put it there at all. It's just that sometimes you may not see a bar because the minimum might be the very bottom of that graph or you might, or the maximum might hit the very top of your graph. Nothing wrong with that, but that's what the plus one and minus one will do. Again, I'll come back and address that as we make the bar graph. So showing you the one on the three day min, this one here, the minus one, I don't have it in here yet, but uh, we will come back and add that in the bar graph tutorial. So some other things that you wanna go ahead and create are going to be your colors. Uh, what do you want your colors to be? Um, I just got some blacks, whites, and grays set up right now. Uh, how thick do you want your lines to be when we make our line graph? How big do you want the dots to be? The padding is very important. Go ahead and create a padding, and all of these are number global variables. And by default, it goes from 0 to 720. You can leave it like that. It's no big deal. We shouldn't need anything higher than 720, and obviously we probably will never use zero for most of these globals. Bar width, how wide do you want your bars to be when we make it? The graph height, that is very important. I mentioned it over here. We're gonna go over that in more detail as we create our stuff. And stationary thick, that's what that stands for. The thickness of our stationary graph lines. We're gonna have some horizontal lines going across our graph. How thick do we want those to be? A lot of customizing here. And then we have the graph type. Um, one thing that I noticed that I'm missing here, and I don't know where it went off to, but I need to add whole height. That is very important for us to create this and uh, easily to be able to easily scale this thing. So whole height, and that's gonna be a number global variable. And I'm just gonna leave it from zero to 720. I'm gonna bump this up a little bit, maybe to around 400 for right now. So uh, giving it a quick check, I'll make sure I've covered everything with you. Uh, just hang tight for a second. And I think that just about covers it. Uh, so the only thing I did there was move my number global variable up. And then this list global down here, when we finally have everything created, uh, we'll come back and apply some codes to where do we want to see just the bar graph, just the line graph, or do we want to see them both? So a quick toggle to be able to go through those pieces. So this is gonna be the conclusion to part one. In part two, we're gonna go ahead and start making the graph itself, being able to see the shape, uh, the whole card, and we'll go ahead and get our stationary lines up there. And then we'll probably go ahead and start adding our bar graph to that as well. But for now, this video here, this is probably the most important video um, in terms of understanding what these number global variables are doing. Because when I start using these in the future videos, it's gonna be important for you to reference back to these and be like, okay, what is that really doing? And hopefully by us doing this, you'll understand some of the math that's going on there. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.